everyone's here for the line dance class, correct? <laughs> no? So today we're going to be talking about effective donor messaging. Um, and that's very vague. With nonprofit marketing, one of the things that happens is it's such a vague space that people don't even know what to do. So we're going to break down what kind of messaging do you need to get donors, what does it look like, and then how. How do you do it? But what you will see is that there are key themes to um, nonprofit marketing effectively that are going to be consistent, and that's because it's best practices and that's because it works. My name is Kelly Ganyan. I am the founder of Grit HQ. We provide creative solutions for nonprofits and small businesses. The branding is more than just a logo, right? And it really is the visual representation of how you want someone to feel that's representing your agency. And I know that sounds so abstract and like artsy fartsy, like, right? But um, if you're not looking at something and getting any feeling out of it, then your brand is not working for you, okay? A solid brand should set you apart, um, should make you recognizable. I don't know if you, this might be something just to be cognizant of moving forward. Typically when I talk about uh, branding for nonprofits and style guides, um, I'm saying it because you have 20 different people creating things that are going out. There's a secretary, there's a board president, there are programming directors, right? And there's nothing consistent. And for me, I battled where people really like to be creative. <laughs> and I say with marketing, creativity killed the cat. Like, it really did. Like, if you're a nonprofit and you're trying to DIY it and you're trying to have people be creative, like, the whole goal of branding is so it's recognizable and representative. So as soon as you add all this creativity and different fonts and different colors and really different even like graphics, um, you're losing that recognizability. And I hope two months from now, after you like my Facebook page and something shows up, you can see as that's going through your newsfeed that that's me because everything looks the same. And you'll think of this experience right here because it's all connected. And that's your goal with branding is no matter where you show up, it's consistent and you're trying to evoke the same feeling. But branding, which will be, need to be used for every single donor messaging and connect you to your programming, includes a tagline, a mission or vision, um, it includes your tone slash voice. So if you have multiple people, if one person wrote your website copy and another person is doing your e-newsletters and another person is doing your uh, social media, right? Um, then it's not consistent and your, t your voice is part of your brand. Um, I I'll throw use of video on everything because I think it's important. <laughs> so that's gonna be part of branding too, use of video. Um, three to five colors, up to three fonts, uh, your own stock photos that we'll talk about later, and consistency. So those are the things that all together uh, show your brand. But remember, your brand is all about communicating the feeling or experience people get when they work with you. And I think for nonprofits, taking those same risks is important. I talk about if you would have seen me a year ago, my branding did not match, right? I failed forward. And I had this sweet picture of me like this. I'm like, that's not reflective of me. There was a disconnect between what my branding looked like and the experience people had with me. So when I went through my rebrand last April, that was like a very intentional decision I made is to make sure this was the most reflective of um, the experience people have. And people probably think I'm verbal, assertive, um, numbers driven. And then in my space, compared to everyone else, especially in downstate Illinois, I am very cutting edge. Right, so I'm pushing towards things that people aren't necessarily pushing towards. Like branding and messaging is all about cohesiveness. So typically there are words either from your mission statement or from maybe even more like a vision statement that are words that you should be repeating over and over and over again in all of your marketing. So just set a timer for two minutes, write down as many words as you can and then circle the ones that are most reflective. And then when you're creating annual reports, Facebook posts, whatever, they should be 
right in front of your computer and you should use those words. Using those words over and over again will help with branding consistency, but it'll also get people to know what you're really about. Like, what you are, especially for donors, is not the services you provide, it's the feeling and support you create. So it is those abstract things. I don't care how many square feet you have, I don't care how many, sorry, I don't care how many kids you serve, I, you know, I care about for that one kid. What does it feel like? What is the quality of service? Anyone producing any marketing, whether it be donor, program, um, internal, I also say internal marketing sometimes is the most difficult to like stop. Internal communications should all be done only using your brand fonts and colors. Attraction marketing and donor messaging. I'm not trying to sell them anything now or in that moment, right? right? Attraction marketing can be to retain or get new. Like, either is okay. Um, if you don't have donors, right, uh, then it's important to start attracting them. This is very different than how people traditionally think about fundraising. Whether it be direct solicitation for funds, whether it be crowdfunding, whether it be um, a special event, right? So, for example, and this is donor messaging, someone attending an event is a potential donor. It should be. Anyone that attends an event, you want to get as much information as possible, then you want to redirect for the next ask, okay? Um, so for example, you have a fundraising event. Instead of saying, hey, we're selling tickets. You've got a week left to sell your tickets. Did you get your ticket yet? Okay, instead of that being your marketing plan, for the fundraiser, a video of a local celebrity doing one of the things that um, is going to be happening to the fundraiser, and then the and is the and this is happening at the I'm, we're standing here I'm like at the Decatur Craft Beer Festival, right? But that's the and, not the primary, right? Attraction marketing for that could be highlighting something really cool that's happening, really great that's happening, highlighting one of the clients that benefits from the services of that fundraiser is supporting, right? And then saying, you can support people like Jimmy by purchasing a ticket for. Only through a very specific story, moment, picture, picture telling, storytelling, um, are you going to really get to, this is meaningful. You can say, we provide meaningful services, but if you show, don't tell, right, that the, that the services are meaningful or the event will be fun. Um, through something super specific, you're gonna reach your target audience. One thing you can do to help your board, um, staff, if you're a large team, you really need to kind of engage everyone to do donor messaging, right? It's not just you, because you're the development person doing donor messaging. Anyone that has any face contact with anyone should be doing donor messaging. And the biggest failing I see is that people will ask, I can't do that. Well, I don't know, I don't know what to talk about. And then sometimes you'll hear the board say, will you equip us with an elevator speech? Can you give us a 30 second thing we can tell people? Only through that person's specific why, that'll communicate to the person right across from them what, what it's really about, um, why they, some, a donor should support it. That's gonna be much better than your board president getting really stoic and saying, we've been in the community since 1986 where we continue to serve blah, 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 blah. If he starts with, let me tell you about the time I first walked in the door here and I was waiting for a meeting and met Michael, right? Like, I don't even know where that story's going from there, but that's gonna bring someone in, that donor message, so much more than this grandiose thing. But this is something I would equip board and staff with if you have any time. Um, if you have like lunch and learns, if you have uh, maybe even like an executive director that's like, no, that's not my thing, or you have people doing it the wrong way, walk them through that organic process, right? We just talked about attraction marketing. You guys came up with who you should be doing stories. And then if you had them spend a couple minutes talking to each other about why they decide to become involved, why they enjoy working there, they're gonna tell those specific stories. And then you say, there you go, you did just, just did donor engagement. That's what it's all about. It's not about knowing all the stats.
Empower them to be ambassadors for your agency. I call it an unelevator pitch, right? Uh, people always try to do these elevator pitches of what should we be saying to represent our agency? Like as long as they know the name of the organization, know a tagline, it should be specific to them.